Can I? Okay. What did that just do to me? Okay. When I started this, I was collecting. My main pattern was Minnesota, made by U.S. Glass Company, and I noticed that there were open compotes, but there were no covered compotes at all in that pattern. And then I noticed that there were no footed celeries. I had seen those at shows and in other patterns. And I thought, why is it that some patterns have shapes that are different for celeries, for compotes, for pickles than other patterns do? And when did things evolve and when did they change? So I started looking into it and I kind of narrowed it down to changes in the shape of the same form um, to caster sets, going to individual pattern pieces, um, celery vases, going to flat celery dishes, uh, compotes in some of the earlier patterns, um, evolved to other patterns that only had bowls, no feet or stems on them, salt dips going to shakers, and pickle pastors going to pickle dishes. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today, those categories and those areas. And I was looking at the time period from around 1870 to 1910 or so. Um, it varied a little on different forms and different pieces. So in the 1870s to 1875, um, and these dates are all a little squishy. I mean, there were things before and things after, but kind of trying to group it in my head where I could remember the dates. <laughs> Caster sets were made by silver plate manufacturers, and then somebody else made glass bottles. And by the 1850s, um, caster sets, which held containers of spices, sauces, and seasonings, were very important in the Victorian home. Uh, some patterns had um, caster sets. Uh, they weren't part of a pattern glass pattern, they were just bottles that were made by somebody else in other patterns. By the 1880s, some of the actual patterns did have a few caster sets, and some had condiment sets during that time. 1885 to 1899 or 1900, um, then several patterns developed a cruet in the actual pattern tableware, like the pattern Minnesota, for example. Um, so here's an example of a caster set. This was circa 1909, made by the Rockford Silver Company, which was in business from 1882 to 1925. This happened to belong to my great-grandmother, Ada Wells, and it has five bottles in it that were engraved, and the bottles were to hold vinegar, oil, salt, pepper, and mustard. Um, my mother remembers seeing this on her grandmother's table in the middle of it, and she called it the salad set because it had the things that you would put on your salad when you were dressing it at the table. This gave way or developed into condiment sets made in certain patterns. Here's a King's Crown caster set in ruby stain, which means it was made by the United States Glass Company after um, 1891. And had bottles for oil, vinegar, salt, and pepper. Now, the metal caster moved around in a circle. The glass one here um, is rigid. It does not rotate. And then from um, caster sets, some patterns developed uh, condiment sets. This is an example of Wisconsin, where there's a base that holds two covered um, containers that have a slot for a spoon. It could be a mustard pot or possibly a horseradish pot, and then salt and pepper shakers. And you could lift up the whole thing by hand, hanging onto the handle. And then later on, around 1900, this is Minnesota, 1898, um, instead of a caster set in that pattern, the individual pieces were developed. And here's an early uh, development of just a vinegar cruet in the pattern rather than being a vinegar bottle sitting in the caster set. And you can see that there are also salt and pepper shakers in this pattern. And there is a um, mustard, which is the same 
mold as the salt and pepper shakers, but it has a different screw on cap for the mustard in this one. Um, little story, when I found this mustard, I was in um, New Mexico and I was flying home and this went through the airport uh, screening device. This was before 9-11, but they were very interested in knowing what that was. With that handle and that metal on there, the metal detector thought I had a hand grenade in there. And so the security people were uh, making me unwrap it and check it out and everything. And then they saw it was just a little piece of glass and it was like, well, okay, go on, no problem. <laughs> Around 1890s, uh, many patterns started um, developing their own cruets in the pattern. Um, the green one here is Esther, made by Riverside Glass in 1896 in green and gold. And I have cruets made by U.S. Glass Company. Um, this one in front is Indiana. And the one in back, the tall skinny one is Georgia. And then off to the right in back is my Minnesota cruet. Okay, the next category is celeries. And in the 1870s to 80s, many of the early patterns had, were a tall vase with a stem. Later, um, we had tall vases with a flat foot. Um, then later, still 1890s, some patterns had both a vase and a flat tray. And by the 1900s, most of the patterns made after that would just have a flat tray for celery, usually 10 or 13 inches long in that range. So here's an example of a 1880 celery, which has is a short stem. This is Cupid and Venus, made around 1880. And you can see I put celery in it when I photographed it. But the long pieces of celery with the leaves would have been put in the celery and placed on the table um, for eating. Here's just the tall base celery without the stem or the foot. We have a Van Dyke, Daisy and Button with V ornament, and a Michigan from 1881 and 1902. Now the Michigan is a pattern where they have the flat celery and they have a flat celery, both pieces in the same pattern. And then here's Minnesota, which only has a flat celery, made a little bit later in time and the form is just a plain, plain flat tray. It's less of a decorative piece now. Then we move on to compotes. In the 1880s, most of the patterns would have a covered compote, maybe in various sizes. Um, they would protect against flies and dirt and things that would be floating around your house. Um, usually they were round compotes and most of them had high stem. By 1890s, there were more patterns that would have open compotes, no cover. Um, they were made in more shapes oval, boat shape, square, and round as well, and high and low stem. Now these aren't solid. Um, this only happened in the 1890s and they only had these forms. They said these dates are kind of squishy and these forms floated back and forth, but um, you'll see an, a progression as the compotes moved from the covered high stem ones down into the 1900s when the patterns were making even fewer compotes at all and more bowls in various sizes and shapes in the patterns. So here's Canadian from the 1870s. It's a round covered compote, straight sides so that the lid fits nicely on top of it. Here's King's Crown from 1880 to 1893. Because it's ruby stained, it's going to be after 1893 when that ruby stain was invented at the um, Chicago World's Fair. Um, but this is an open compote. It wasn't ever designed to have a lid. And you can see it's flared at the top. And then I go back to my Minnesota pattern, which had absolutely no covered compotes at all. All of them were open. And this is the flared compote, 10 inches. Um, with one quart of peaches in it. 
And you can see that that's a fairly large compote if that's all that a quart of peaches fills it up. <laughs> and Minnesota is a pattern that moved to many, many shapes and types of bowls, as well as some open compotes. So this is the um, round flared seven inch bowl with fruit and five inch individual um, bowls. These are a variety of the Minnesota bowls holding fresh strawberries. We have a round 10 inch, seven inch and five and a quarter inch round flared bowl. We have square bowls in this pattern, eight inches and four inches. We have boat shaped where the two ends are kind of pulled up into a point, um, the 11 inch and the five and a quarter inch uh, boat shaped items. Then we moved to salts. In the 1860s, there were flint covered salts. Um, 1880s, there were salt dips and various shapes. And eight, by 1890s, the salt shakers were invented. Some of the early ones had various mechanical devices inside to break up the hard clumps of salt that clump together in the humid weather. Um, but more and more patterns had salt shakers after the 1890s. So this is an example of um, a sawtooth flint covered salt from around the 1860s. Here we have um, salt dip where the master and individual, this is the electric pattern by US Glass from 1891. You can see the master salt is, um, I can't remember, two and a half inches maybe diameter. And the little ones are about an inch. Actually, they're kind of cute. You couldn't dip a very big piece of celery in there, but um, you can get some salt out of it. And in that pattern, they also had um, blown molded salt shaker. So they had this pressed um, salt dips and they made the salt shaker as well. This was not, um, this was blown molded. It's fairly thin glass if you look at it. Some salt shakers from various uh, US glass patterns. In the back, the tall one is New Hampshire. This came in a hotel size, taller and bigger around than what the table size would be. The green one here is the Colorado. And I called it a salt and pepper shaker because inside the shaker, there is a little cylinder that has pepper in it. And the top of it, if you can see the top, there are holes around the larger part of the lid and there are also holes in the smaller lid. I'll show you another picture that gives more detail on that one. And then in the Minnesota pattern, a pair of uh, salt and pepper shakers. So here's that Colorado one. And on the lid, it's open here, you can see that there's a little knob. And as you rotate it around, it opens the holes on the big part or it opens the holes on the little part. So you can shake out salt or you can shake out pepper. And here's the little, on the right, you can see the little cylinder with pepper in it that screws into the top. And then the whole piece here screws into the um, shaker. I've seen these um, type of shakers with uh, button arches pattern on their tall cylindrical shakers as well. Okay, then we move to pickles. Early on, there were silver uh, pickle casters and there were lots of fancy uh, colored glass pickle inserts. There were some pattern glass inserts as well. Um, as things became simpler and more streamlined then the pickle casters maybe were still being sold but weren't being actually produced. They were just coming out of stock. So there's, they were still around on the tables up until 1900 and so on. But the new things that were being made um, might not have had the silver standard with it. They would just have the pickle jars. And later, 1890, 1915, we went to flat pickle dishes, which today we call relish dishes or other things as well. 
But here's a pickle caster, the Van Dyke pattern in a silver plate holder with the tongs hanging on the side. And there were many, many different inserts made for these um, pickle casters that were made by silver plate manufacturing companies. And then they were put together and sold through various uh, businesses. This is an example of a covered pickle jar. It has a glass cover. This is the pattern Cornell from 1898 Tarentum Glass Company. I think the glass cover would be a lot more practical for pickles than the silver plated or the silver ones because the salt from your pickles isn't gonna corrode the glass the way it would corrode the metal covers. But I'm sure they were useful and enjoyed. And when we get to the Minnesota pattern, um, no covered pickle dishes, we only have flat pickle dishes and we have different shapes. Here's an oval eight inch one with apple slight pickled apples in it and a seven inch boat shaped one with dill cucumbers. Now you think back 1880s, 18, 1900s, people pickled a lot of things besides cucumbers. And so they had on a table, they would put out three or four different kinds of pickled vegetables um, at many meals. And you'd have pickle lily and um, pickled squash, pickled cucumbers, pickled apples, pickled pears, all kinds of fruits and vegetables would be pickled because that was a very good way to preserve them. And then they would be um, dished up and served at lots of meals. So in summary, the dates when forms changed, I kind of grouped them into ten years of, you know, 10, 10 years or so. But from 1880 to 1890, forms changed from more complex and ornate to plainer and more utilitarian. Caster sets changed from the big revolving caster with five, six bottles in it to individual pieces in a regular pattern. Celery vases went from high stemmed vases and they changed to flat dishes. Compotes moved from covered high stemmed to just open compotes to bowls that sat flat on the table. Um, we went from covered flint salts to salt dips and to shakers. And pickle jars went from the ornate um, jars in metal casters to evolving to flat pickle dishes, just like the flat celery dishes. 